Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. In the late 16th and early 17th centuries, the vibrant court of Queen Elizabeth I buzzed with intrigue, ambition and rivalries. Amidst this lively backdrop, one man rose to prominence and captured the imagination of all who encountered him, Sir Walter Raleigh. Born into a gentry family in Devonshire, England in 1552, Raleigh was destined for greatness. As a young man, he displayed an insatiable curiosity about the world and an adventurous spirit that led him to embark on several voyages of exploration. Raleigh's rise to prominence within the court of Queen Elizabeth I was nothing short of remarkable. His magnetic personality and innate charm captivated the Queen's attention, and soon he became a favoured courtier. In addition to his bold voyages, Raleigh possessed a sharp intellect and a way with words that made him a natural fit in the Queen's literary circle. Raleigh's literary pursuits blossomed alongside his maritime adventures. His poetic works such as The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd, a response to Christopher Marlowe's poem, The Passionate Shepherd to His Love, showcased his wit and eloquence. But Raleigh's influence extended far beyond his literary contributions. His keen interest in science and exploration led him to support expeditions to the New World, where he sought to establish English colonies and expand the realm of Queen Elizabeth. Raleigh's exploits and charisma made him a cherished figure in the court, but they also bred envy and resentment among his rivals. To fully comprehend the events that led to Sir Walter Raleigh's imprisonment, we must delve deeper into the remarkable ascent that brought him to the heights of Queen Elizabeth's court. But Raleigh's allure extended beyond his physical appearance. He possessed an intellect as sharp as his sword, and his literary and scholarly pursuits brought him further accolades. As a patron of the arts, Raleigh cultivated a circle of renowned poets, scholars, and playwrights. He established the School of Night, a group of intellectuals who engaged in debates and discussions on a wide range of subjects, from philosophy to science. Raleigh's literary pursuits were not limited to discussions and debates. He penned numerous poems and works of prose that showcased his depth of thought and command of language. The discovery of Guiana, an account of his explorations in South America, remains one of his most celebrated works. But it was Raleigh's talent for captivating storytelling that truly set him apart. His ability to regale his listeners with tales of exotic lands and daring escapades made him a sought-after companion at court. Raleigh's prowess as a courtier, poet, and adventurer endeared him to Queen Elizabeth I, who held him in high regard and granted him numerous titles and honours. As Sir Walter Raleigh's star continued to ascend, another ambitious figure emerged within Queen Elizabeth's court. The Earl of Essex, Robert Devereux, young, charismatic, and determined, Essex sought to carve out his own place in the annals of history and eclipse the shining reputation that Raleigh had. The rivalry between Raleigh and Essex was not born out of a single inciting incident, but rather grew out of a complex web of political and personal entanglements. Essex, a favourite of the Queen in his own right in Italy, had the upper hand in the competition for royal favour. The rivalry between Raleigh and Essex extended beyond mere courtly politics. Their differences in temperament, personality and worldview fueled the animosity between them. As the competition between them intensified, Raleigh and Essex found themselves entangled in opposing factions within the court. Essex sought to consolidate power and enact reforms, while Raleigh remained loyal to the established order. In the year 1592, Sir Walter Raleigh's life took an unexpected and devastating turn. 
The cause of this dramatic twist was none other than his secret marriage to Elizabeth Throckmorton, one of Queen Elizabeth's maids of honour. Queen Elizabeth, known for her pride and authority, saw Raleigh's marriage as a betrayal of her trust. The Queen considered Raleigh to be one of her most trusted and esteemed courtiers, and his actions were seen as a flagrant disregard for her wishes and the protocols of the court. The consequences of Raleigh's secret marriage were swift and severe. Queen Elizabeth's wrath descended upon him like a tempest, stripping him of his titles and banishing him from court. Raleigh, once a favourite in the Queen's inner circle, found himself cast into the cold depths of disgrace and exclusion. The banishment from court was a crushing blow for Raleigh, both personally and professionally. He had spent years cultivating his position and reputation, and now he was forced to endure the shame and isolation that came with his fall from grace. As Sir Walter Raleigh grappled with his banishment from court and worked to rebuild his shattered life, a new threat emerged that would not only complicate his personal struggles, but also pose a grave danger to his very existence. Raleigh, although banished from court, found himself embroiled in the treacherous web of Essex's rebellion. Accusations and suspicions swirled, implicating Raleigh in the conspiracy. Raleigh's connections to Essex, his previous rivalry with the Earl, and his own ambitions made him a prime target for those seeking to tarnish his reputation and bring him down. The situation became increasingly dire for Raleigh. The Queen, aware of the accusations and the mounting evidence against him, saw an opportunity to neutralize a perceived threat. She ordered Raleigh's arrest, and he was imprisoned in the Tower of London, the same fortress that had once held so many of his predecessors and rivals. The Tower of London, a place shrouded in history, became Sir Walter Raleigh's bleak and confining home. Located on the banks of the River Thames, the Tower was a symbol of authority and imprisonment. Its imposing walls and forbidding atmosphere served as a constant reminder of Raleigh's fallen status and the uncertain future that lay ahead. Raleigh's captivity within the Tower was not an isolated incident, but rather part of a long tradition of political imprisonment within its walls. The Tower had witnessed the confinement and execution of numerous individuals throughout history, including queens, nobles, and rebels. It was a place where hopes were dashed, secrets were whispered, and fates were sealed. Raleigh's living conditions within the Tower were far from comfortable. He is confined to a small chamber deprived of the freedom to roam and explore. Yet, even within the confines of his bleak cell, Raleigh's indomitable spirit refused to be extinguished. His mind remained as sharp as ever, and he utilized his time in captivity to immerse himself in intellectual pursuits. Within the confines of the Tower of London, Sir Walter Raleigh endured a life of confinement and isolation. The lack of natural light and fresh air took its toll on Raleigh's physical and mental well-being. The days melded together marked only by the rhythmic tolling of the tower's bells and the occasional sounds of guards passing by. However, Raleigh's resilient nature refused to be defeated. Even in the depths of his confinement he sought solace in the power of the mind. Books became his companions, transporting him to realms far beyond the confines of his cell. In his solitude, Raleigh continued to write, pouring his thoughts onto parchment. His pen became an extension of his voice, allowing him to express his ideas, his dreams, and his frustration. Raleigh's writings were not merely a means of passing the time. They became his lifeline, a source of purpose and connection to the outside world. In his words, he sought to preserve his legacy, to share his thoughts and experiences with future generations. Sir Walter Raleigh's imprisonment in the Tower of London may have stripped him of his freedom, but it could not silence his brilliant mind. It was within the confines of his cell that he undertook one of his greatest literary achievements, writing the history of the world. The history of the world was a monumental work, spanning volumes and centuries, covering the rise and fall of empires, the exploration of new lands, and the struggles of humanity. The task of writing such a vast historical narrative was not an easy one, especially without access to extensive libraries or scholarly resources. 
The writing process itself was a labour of love and dedication. Raleigh would spend hours hunched over his writing desk, quill in hand, as he carefully crafted each sentence. The flickering candlelight cast shadows on the parchment, illuminating the brilliance of his mind and the determination in his eyes. The history of the world was not merely a recounting of historical events. It was also a reflection of Raleigh's own world view and beliefs. He infused the narrative with his own philosophical and political ideas, challenging conventional wisdom and offering his unique perspective on the complexities of human nature and the struggles of civilization. In the solitude of his cell, Raleigh found solace in the act of creation. Writing became his escape, a means to transcend the physical constraints of his captivity and connect with the world beyond the tower's walls. Throughout his time in the Tower of London, Sir Walter Raleigh's thoughts and aspirations were consumed by one singular desire, freedom. The key to his strategy lay in his ability to wield the power of words. His eloquence and persuasive arguments were his most potent weapons. He crafted his letters with meticulous care, selecting his words with precision to sway the heart and mind of the king. Raleigh's reputation as a scholar and a man of letters served him well in his quest for freedom. He leveraged his intellectual prowess and extensive network of connections to garner support from influential figures within the court. But securing his release would not be an easy task. Raleigh's imprisonment had become intertwined with political considerations and international tensions. Undeterred, Raleigh explored other avenues to secure his freedom. He proposed plans for future explorations and colonial ventures, offering his services and knowledge to the crown. He believed that his expertise and experience in the new world could still be of value to the king, despite his tarnished reputation. Raleigh's quest for freedom became a test of his resilience and determination. Despite setbacks and disappointments, he refused to abandon hope. In 1616, he was granted a glimmer of hope, an opportunity to embark on one final voyage, a quest that held the promise of redemption and a chance to restore his reputation. Raleigh saw this expedition as a way to prove his loyalty to King James I and to demonstrate his unwavering commitment to the crown. He believed that if he could bring back tangible evidence of the existence of El Dorado, it would not only vindicate his earlier explorations, but also secure his release from the Tower of London. With a small fleet of ships and a crew filled with seasoned sailors and adventurous souls, Raleigh set sail for the unknown. The journey was arduous, fraught with hardships and obstacles. They battled treacherous storms, navigated treacherous waters, and faced the perils of disease and scarcity. As they ventured deeper into uncharted territories, Raleigh's leadership and resilience shone through. He navigated the intricate network of rivers and jungles, facing the challenges with determination and a steadfast spirit. Despite setbacks and losses, he remained steadfast in his pursuit of the elusive El Dorado. But as the expedition pressed on, it became apparent that the dream of finding El Dorado was slipping further out of reach. The mythical city remained an enigma tantalizingly just beyond their grasp. Tragedy struck the expedition when Raleigh's son, Walter, lost his life in a skirmish with Spanish forces. The loss of his beloved son dealt a crushing blow to Raleigh's spirit, leading him grief-stricken and consumed by a sense of sorrow that mirrored his own dashed dreams. The expedition, now fraught with grief and dwindling resources, was forced to return to England empty-handed. Upon his return to England, Sir Walter Raleigh's fate took a cruel and inevitable turn. King James I, viewing the failed expedition as a violation of the peace treaty with Spain, saw an opportunity to finally bring an end to Raleigh's turbulent life. Raleigh's return to English soil marked the beginning of his final chapter, one filled with trials, accusations, and a relentless pursuit of justice. He was brought back to the Tower of London, the very place from which he had sought to escape, but this time the outcome was far more ominous. The accusations against Raleigh were grave, 
centering on his involvement in the rebellion led by the Earl of Essex years earlier. The verdict was swift and damning. He was found guilty of treason and sentenced to death. The news sent shockwaves through the court and the realm. The once celebrated adventurer, poet and scholar now faced the ultimate punishment for his alleged crimes. On October 29, 1618, Sir Walter Raleigh's life hung in the balance as he faced his final moments in the old palace yard at Westminster. The crowds gathered eager to witness the execution of a man who had once commanded the seas and captured the imagination of the nation. Raleigh's spirit remained unbroken, even in the face of imminent death. He met his fate with dignity and courage, refusing to let his enemies see him broken. As he stood on the scaffold, he delivered a poignant and powerful speech, his words carrying the weight of a life lived with conviction and purpose. With his final breaths, Raleigh professed his innocence and his unwavering loyalty to the crown. He expressed remorse for any wrongs he may have committed, but maintained his belief in the righteousness of his call. The crowd... Moved by his words, fell into a hushed silence, witnessing the end of a remarkable era. As the executioner's axe fell, Sir Walter Raleigh's journey came to a tragic close. The man who had once sailed uncharted waters, penned masterpieces, and dared to dream of unimagined riches now lay lifeless. His execution marked the end of an era, a chapter in history that celebrated the triumphs and tragedies of a remarkable man. The legacy of Sir Walter Raleigh, however, would endure. His contributions to literature, exploration, and the cultural landscape of Europe left an indelible mark. Though his life ended prematurely and in sorrow, Sir Walter Raleigh's spirit lives on in the annals of history. He is remembered as an emblem of ambition, resilience, and the pursuit of knowledge. Despite the tragic end to his life, his legacy continues to resonate through the annals of history. His contributions and influence span multiple domains, leaving an indelible mark on literature, exploration, and the cultural landscape of Europe. One of Raleigh's most enduring legacies lies in his literary achievements. His works, such as The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd and The Discovery of Guiana, continue to be studied and admired for their lyrical beauty and profound insights. Raleigh's eloquence and command of language captivated readers then and continue to captivate readers today. Raleigh's contributions to the English language itself cannot be overlooked. He is credited with popularizing the introduction of the potato and tobacco from the New World to Europe, forever altering culinary traditions and social custom. Raleigh's explorations in the New World also left an indelible mark on the history of exploration and colonization. Despite the elusiveness of El Dorado, his expeditions provided invaluable geographical knowledge and inspired future generations of explorers. Furthermore, Raleigh's life and adventures inspired countless works of literature, theatre, and art. From epic poems like John Milton's Paradise Lost to plays and paintings that depicted Raleigh's captivating story, his experiences became the stuff of legend. His imprisonment in the Tower of London, in particular, captured the imaginations of artists and audiences, evoking emotions of resilience, fortitude, and the triumph of the human spirit. Sir Walter Raleigh's captivating life and tragic end have inspired countless works of literature, theatre and art. His adventures, his imprisonment and his undeniable charisma provided rich material for artists of various mediums. In literature, Raleigh's name became synonymous with adventure and exploration. His exploits were romanticised and embellished, captivating the imaginations of authors and readers alike. Raleigh's story was immortalized in epic poems, plays, and novels. Writers of the Romantic era such as Lord Byron and Percy Bysshe Shelley were drawn to Raleigh's larger-than-life persona and the themes of ambition, heroism, and tragic destiny. The visual arts also embraced Raleigh's story, depicting him in portraits, historical paintings, and murals. Artists sought to capture his enigmatic personality, portraying him as a dashing figure, often adorned in rich attire and holding the tools of his trade, a quill, a sword, or a globe. 
These visual representations breathed life into Raleigh's story, allowing viewers to experience the charisma and intrigue that surrounded him. The theatre was another realm where Raleigh's tale found resonance. Playwrights crafted dramas and tragedies based on his life, exploring themes of ambition, loyalty and betrayal. The tale of Sir Walter Raleigh's imprisonment in the Tower of London holds profound lessons that continue to resonate with audiences today. It serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of ambition, the consequences of political intrigue and the enduring power of the human spirit. Raleigh's imprisonment highlights the precarious nature of power and the unpredictability of political dynamics. His rivalry with Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, demonstrated the dangers of unchecked ambition and the lengths to which individuals would go to secure their positions in courtly circles. Raleigh's fall from grace serves as a reminder that the pursuit of power, if not tempered by wisdom and integrity, can lead to one's downfall. The Tower of London, a symbol of confinement and despair, became the crucible where Raleigh's resilience and intellectual prowess shone through. Despite the physical constraints, he refused to allow his spirit to be imprisoned. Raleigh's unwavering dedication to intellectual pursuits and his ability to find solace in the power of words showcased the strength of the human mind to transcend even the most confining circumstances. A towering figure, both in stature and intellect, Raleigh was a man of many talents, whose exploits on the high seas, literary prowess and charm made him an unforgettable presence in the annals of history. It was during these voyages that Raleigh first encountered the New World, laying the foundations for his later exploits and cementing his reputation as a daring adventurer. These works established Raleigh as a leading figure in the Elizabethan literary scene and brought him into the inner circle of the Queen's court. Raleigh's most notable endeavour was the ill-fated Roanoke Colony, an early attempt at English settlement in what is now present-day North Carolina. Although the Roanoke Colony ultimately vanished, it fueled Raleigh's ambition to uncover the riches and mysteries of the New World. One such rival was Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, a man of equal ambition who sought to eclipse Raleigh's shining star. The rivalry between these two men would shape the course of Raleigh's life and ultimately lead to him being imprisoned. Raleigh's journey to prominence began with his service as a soldier, distinguishing himself in various military campaigns, including the wars against the Spanish Armada. In an era when literacy was still a rarity, Raleigh's ability to navigate the realms of both war and words set him apart from his peers. This intellectual camaraderie fueled his own creativity and broadened his understanding of the world. It painted a vivid picture of the bountiful land he had encountered, fueling the imaginations of readers and stoking the fires of their own dreams of adventure. He became the Queen's trusted adviser and a key player in the political landscape of the time. Raleigh's meteoric rise to prominence was a testament to his exceptional abilities and the allure he held over those who crossed his path. Both men sought the favour of the Queen, and their competing ambitions set the stage for a clash that would reverberate through the corridors of power. His close relationship with Queen Elizabeth and his influential position as the master of the horse granted him significant influence over court affairs. Essex saw Raleigh as a formidable obstacle on his path to unchecked power and sought to undermine his rival at every turn. While Raleigh embodied a more measured and calculating approach, Essex is impulsive, prone to outbursts of temper, and inclined to take reckless action. The division between these factions exacerbated their rivalry and created an atmosphere of intrigue and treachery. The news of this clandestine union kept hidden from the Queen ignited a fierce storm of anger and disappointment within the royal court. In her eyes, Raleigh had not only married without her permission, but he had also chosen a bride far beneath his station. However, Raleigh's spirit remained unbroken and he refused to succumb to despair. Instead, he sought solace in his intellectual pursuits and his unwavering belief in his own abilities. 
In 1599, Robert Deborough, the Earl of Essex, launched a daring rebellion against Queen Elizabeth's government, seeking to overthrow her rule and take control. The question of his involvement became a matter of utmost importance both to his enemies and to the Queen herself. His adversaries seized the opportunity to paint him as a traitor, a dangerous and disloyal figure who had conspired with Essex against the Queen. The room offered limited access to natural light, and the heavy iron bars on the window served as a constant reminder of the captivity he endured. The dampness of the tower's walls seemed to seep into his bones, exacerbating the physical discomforts of imprisonment. It was during his imprisonment that Raleigh embarked on the monumental task of writing his magnum opus, The History of the World. The cold stone walls seemed to whisper tales of past prisoners, their hopes and dreams shattered within these very cells. Raleigh's chamber, small and dimly lit, offered little solace from the harsh realities of his captivity. It was a world detached from the vibrant, courtly life that Raleigh had once known, a world that threatened to dampen his spirit and extinguish his ambition. He immersed himself in the classics, in philosophy, and in the works of his contemporaries, finding refuge and intellectual stimulation in their pages. He wrote letters to friends and allies, beseeching their assistance and support. He penned treatises on various subjects, delving into history, science, and politics, displaying the breadth of his knowledge and the depth of his intellect. Even in the midst of captivity, he remained determined to leave his mark on the world. Raleigh's goal was to create a comprehensive account that would enlighten and captivate readers, weaving together historical facts, philosophical musings, and personal insights. Raleigh relied on his prodigious memory, drawing upon his vast knowledge and experiences, to bring the past to life on the pages of his manuscript. He meticulously researched and cross-referenced sources, ensuring accuracy and authenticity in his retelling of events. It was a testament to the power of the human spirit which could find freedom, even in the most confining of circumstances. Through his writing, he painted a portrait of himself as a loyal subject who had been wronged, emphasizing his past achievements and his unwavering dedication to the crown. He knew that the power of persuasion extended beyond the written word, and he sought to win allies and champions who would advocate on his behalf. The king was wary of granting freedom to a man accused of treason, especially in the face of pressure from foreign powers who sought retribution for Raleigh's earlier exploits. He knew that his release hinged not only on his ability to present a compelling case, but also on the whims of political fortune and the mercy of the king. Raleigh's fate hung in the balance, and the outcome would shape the final chapter of his remarkable life. The mission was to explore South America once again, with the ultimate goal of finding the legendary city of El Dorado, a fabled city said to be overflowing with gold and untold riches. Raleigh's hopes of redemption began to dwindle, replaced by a sense of desperation and the realization that his final voyage would not yield the desired outcome. Again, swayed by political pressures and seeking to appease Spain, ordered Raleigh's immediate arrest. The king saw Raleigh as a dangerous figure, a threat to his reign and the stability of the realm. The trial that followed was a spectacle of power and justice, where Raleigh's fate would be decided. His writings, including the history of the world, continue to be studied and admired, testaments to his intellectual prowess and enduring influence. The tale of his imprisonment and execution serves as a stark reminder of the perils that await those who dare to challenge the powers that be a cautionary tale that lingers in the hearts and minds of those who dare to dream. These introductions had a profound impact on global trade and cultural exchange, shaping the future of international commerce and agriculture. His belief in the potential of English colonization in the Americas laid the groundwork for future English settlements in North America. The legendary lost city of El Dorado continued to serve as a symbol of unattainable riches and mythical quests inspiring tales of adventure and discovery for generations to come.
His adventures, his love affairs, and his unyielding spirit became the subject of many literary works, further cementing his place in the pantheon of literary legends. The stage became a canvas on which Raleigh's adventures, his imprisonment, and his ultimate fate were vividly brought to life, captivating audiences with tales of courage and tragedy. His journeys and his literary works became touchstones for artists across continents, adding to the tapestry of cultural expression that celebrated his remarkable life. Sir Walter Raleigh's imprisonment in the Tower of London continues to captivate castle enthusiasts, reminding us of the complexities of human nature, the fragility of power, and the indomitable spirit that can emerge in the face of adversity. It serves as a testament to the enduring legacy of a man whose name is forever etched in the annals of history. His military exploits, coupled with his charismatic personality, drew the attention of the Queen. She recognized his potential and appointed him as one of her gentlemen in waiting, an esteemed position that afforded him proximity to the center of power. His dashing looks, charm, and courtly manners made him a favorite of Queen Elizabeth and earned him the nickname the Queen's Pet. His stories, filled with vivid descriptions and embellished details, transported his audience to distant shores and instilled a sense of wonder and excitement. He yearned to escape the confines of his prison, to breathe the air of the outside world once more. He sought every opportunity to plead his case, to secure his release, and reclaim his place in society. The quest for freedom took various forms. He wrote impassioned letters and petitions to King James I, who had succeeded Queen Elizabeth to the throne. In these missives, Raleigh eloquently argued his innocence, presenting his case with such clarity and conviction that it was impossible to ignore. Ever the brilliant orator defended himself with eloquence and conviction. He refuted the accusations against him, emphasizing his loyalty to the crown and his unwavering dedication to the realm. But the outcome of the trial was already predetermined, the scales of justice tipped against him. His story also transcended national boundaries, captivating the imaginations of artists beyond England. In Europe and the Americas, his name became synonymous with exploration and the quest for knowledge. His story teaches us the importance of maintaining integrity in the face of adversity. Despite the hardships he endured, Raleigh clung to his principles and unwavering loyalty to the crown. His unyielding spirit and refusal to compromise his values stand as a testament to the enduring power of personal integrity, even in the face of grave injustices. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening.